So what advice do you have for someone uh, who wants to get started in deep learning? Train lots of models. That's that's how you that's how you learn it. So like, so I would you know I think I, I, it's not just me. I think I think our course is very good, but also lots of people independently have said it's very good. It recently won the COGX award for AI courses as being the best in the world. So I'd say come to our course, course.fast.ai. And the thing I keep on harping on in my lessons is train models, print out the inputs to the models, print out to the outputs to the models, like study, you know, change, change the inputs a bit, look at how the outputs vary, just run lots of experiments to get a, you know, an intuitive understanding of what's going on. To get hooked, do you think, you mentioned training, do you think just running the models inference like if we talk about getting started, no, you've got to fine tune the models. So that's 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 the critical thing because at that point you now have a model that's in your domain area. Mm-hmm. So there's 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 no point running somebody else's model because it's not your model. Like so, it only takes five minutes to fine tune a model for the data you care about. And in lesson two of the course, we teach you how to create your own data set from scratch by scripting Google Image Search. Yeah. So. And we show you how to actually create a web application running online. So I create one in the course that differentiates between a teddy bear, a grizzly bear, and a brown bear. <laughs> and it does it with basically 100% accuracy. It took me about four minutes to scrape the images from Google Search from the script. There's uh, little um, graphical widgets we have in the notebook that help you clean up the data set. Uh, there's other widgets that help you study the results to see where the errors are happening. And so now we've got over a thousand replies in our share your work here thread of students saying, here's the thing I built. And so there's people who like, and, and a lot of them are state of the art. Like mm-hmm. somebody said, oh, I tried looking at Devon Gary characters and I couldn't believe it. The thing that came out was more accurate than the best academic paper mm-hmm. after lesson one. And then there's others which are just more kind of fun. Like somebody is doing Trinidad and Tobago hummingbirds. She said that's kind of their national bird and she, she's got something that can now classify Trinidad and Tobago hummingbirds. So yeah, train models, fine tune models with your data set and then study their inputs and outputs. How much is fast AI courses? Free. Everything we do is free. We have no revenue sources of any kind. It's just a service to the community. You're a saint. Okay. <laughs> Once a person understands the basics, trains a bunch of models, if we look at the scale of years, what advice do you have for someone wanting to eventually become an expert? Train lots of models. <laughs> um, but specifically, train lots of models in your domain area. So an expert what, right? We don't need more expert, like, create slightly evolutionary research in areas that everybody's studying. We need experts at using deep learning to diagnose mal- malaria, or we need experts at using deep learning to analyze language to study mm-hmm. media bias. So we need experts in um, um, analyzing fisheries to identify problem areas in you know the ocean. You know that that's that's what we need. So like become the expert in your passion area and this is a tool which you can use for just about anything, and you'll be able to do that thing better than other people, particularly by combining it with your passion and domain expertise. So that's really interesting. Even if you do want to innovate on transfer learning or active learning, your thought is, I mean, it's one I certainly share, is you also need to find a domain or a data set that you actually really care for. Right. If you're not working on a real problem that you understand, how do you know if you're doing it any good? You know, how do you know if your results are good? How do you know if you're getting bad results? Why you're getting bad results? Is it a problem with the data? Is, like, how do you know you're doing anything useful? Yeah, the only, to me, the only really interesting research is, well, not the only, but the vast majority of interesting research is like, try and solve an actual problem and right. solve it really well. 